Um, I think that there's so many different ways you can go into technical writing. Um, you know, I, I've seen people who have gone through and had technical writing degrees, and I've seen others who maybe started in a specific area at a technical or at a software company, and from there moved into technical writing because either they didn't have a technical writer and they needed someone to do it, or, you know, they they just were low on resources and had to kind of pull their weight in, in different areas. So um, I've, I've seen people from a variety of areas get into the technical writing field. And I don't think you need to have that specific degree in order to do it, which is pretty exciting. Welcome to the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. Where Gowri Ram Kumar of Document 360 finds the best SaaS self service knowledge bases in the world and then interviews their creators. Let's get started with today's episode. Good day, everyone. Our guest today is Lindsay Gilbert, technical writer at Paradox. Welcome, Lindsay, to the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. How are you doing today? Hello, Ed. Thank you. I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm great. I'm great, Lindsay. And once again, thank you for participating in this podcast series. Um, so, Lindsay, please help us understand a little bit more about yourself and how did you get into this documentation career? Yeah, absolutely. So, I had always had a dream about being a teacher when I was younger. And so, after I graduated from graduate school, I was able to teach both secondary and post secondary classes. And I did that for about two years. I really enjoyed it. I love being able to work with students one-on-one, -on -one, uh, talk about their writing and give them feedback. But I found that I did not have a good work-life balance. And when I wanted to think about a way that I could still teach in some capacity, um, but also kind of work a little bit more behind the scenes and have a better work-life balance, I kind of fell into technical writing. Um, I tried it out and I ended up loving it. And it's been something that I've wanted to continue to pursue since then. Fantastic. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about your educational background as well. So you've got a Bachelor of Secondary Education in Creative Writing and Literary Studies, correct? Yes. So And, uh, uh, and a Master's in English too. Yes. Yep. So I'm sure these must have helped you uh, to shape even better. So tell us a little bit about that, Lindsay. Yeah, so uh, for my undergraduate degree, I, you know, um, studied mainly English education, but I did minor in literary studies and creative writing. I really loved writing and I loved analyzing writing. And um, of course, like I said, always wanted to be a teacher. And so I pursued that, but I also for a while considered teaching maybe at a higher level, um, teaching at the college level. So that's when I um, pursued further and uh, applied to the University of Louisville to be a graduate teaching assistant and I, I um, got the position. So that was really fantastic. Um, working as a graduate teaching assistant, they essentially pay for your education and in return you work for them in a multiple capacities. And so for my level, I worked as a writing center assistant the first year. So I would work with students in the writing center. I would review the prompts that they would receive and the writing that they created for that prompt and then would provide them feedback on it. And I worked with students, uh, you know, very first year of college, uh, all the way up to, um, you know, doctoral students. So I read a, a range of writing. Um, and I even my second year worked as a, a copy editor for the Louisville Logistics and Inst uh, Logistics and Distribution Institute. Mm -hmm. um, and, and through that, I was able to provide uh, students whose first language was not English feedback on their writing and research. And then, of course, my second year, I also worked as an adjunct instructor, and I, I taught two sections each semester of intra-level English at the college level. So uh, really fantastic, really eye-opening experience, really helped to give me a better insights into the world of writing and communication. Um, I also studied a little bit into linguistics, so it was really helpful to get more of a, a bigger sense of what you know, languages and how we communicate. Um, and I believe through those experiences um, that was able to help push me forward into technical writing because without it, um, I don't think I would have been able to kind of jump, make that career jump. 
Right. So in that case, do aspiring tech writers have to be from a creative writing degree in order to succeed? I don't believe so. Um, I think that there's so many different ways you can go into technical writing. Um, you know, I, I've seen people who have gone through and had technical writing degrees, and I've seen others who maybe started in a specific area at a technical or at a software company, and from there moved into technical writing because either they didn't have a technical writer and they needed someone to do it, or you know they they just were low on resources and had to kind of pull their weight in, in different areas. So um, I've, I've seen people from a variety of areas get into the technical writing field. And I don't think you need to have that specific degree in order to do it, which is pretty exciting. That's true. That's true, Lindsay. And um, also just to talk about your recent um, uh, company uh, or your recent job, you recently moved to Paradox just three months ago. Uh, just about. I think we're almost there. Yeah, which is crazy. Time flies. <laughs> so great, great. First of all, congratulations for your new role. And um, what I wanted to understand is what growth opportunities from a technical writer perspective uh, did you see that made you uh, this transition to, the com to a new company? Well, thank you. Um, and I am extremely excited about this new opportunity. I had a wonderful time at my previous company. At Paradox, there's a, a range of opportunities in the sense that they currently don't have a full functioning support center. Um, our client success team has been doing a fantastic job at building relationships with clients and providing them with the documentation they need. In addition to that, our product team has been creating internal documentation to help educate our client success team on products that are being released. So Paradox, all the teams before I got here have been doing an amazing job at supporting our clients without having somebody to actually be there to document um, both internal and external. Um, while those have, like I said, those duties have been taken over by mm -hmm. our product team and um, even our product marketing team, as well as our CS team, coming in and seeing how client-centered our company is completely blew me away. And so it's really great to be able to work with such a fantastic group that value their clients. And I am extremely excited to be one of those team members. So moving forward, um, a lot of opportunities exist. I'm able to complete some research and figure out our team needs and decide on the best software solution that can benefit our company and our clients. Uh, in addition to that, um, I will be kind of paving new waves and creating new processes for a technical writing team, which we're hoping in the future we can bring on more technical writers to really build up and support our company in a variety of ways. So having this opportunity to work at Paradox has given me the ability to create a support center essentially from scratch with the help, of course, of our amazing team and their previous knowledge and documentation that has been created and maybe even see it grow and become a leader in this area one day. So lots of exciting things coming at Paradox. Fantastic. So once again, good luck with all the processes that you're going to set in the coming days and uh, months and for all the new documentations that you're going to create uh, with this opportunity, uh, Lindsay. So uh, can so you did mention that um, the team isn't too big, is it? Uh, so what's your reporting um, structure look like? Who do you report to and what kind of reports do you produce? So yes, I actually work with uh, the VP of product over one specific portion of our product. And um, as of now, it's just me. Uh, we do have a, a technical writer that does work with an engineering portion of our team. But as for client facing documentation and release notes areas, that is purely me. So um, I had just have one report up and when I report out, I typically will communicate directly to client success, product, and product marketing. Great. So that's absolutely fantastic to know, Lindsay. Um, so in, on that basis, is the documents that you're going to be producing, is it going to be a publicly available one or is it something that's kept private only to be accessed by signed users? Yes. So our goal is to have 
uh, our users sign in. We want to provide them with all the knowledge they need, but kind of have a little bit of security there, especially since the, the product that we have is, you know, mostly new and quite advanced. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep a, a little bit of things hidden for now, but uh, we do want to provide everything we can to our clients. So uh, security is number one and uh, a login will be required. Fantastic. So in that case, can I assume that there's no organic search traffic playing any role here? For now, I would say maybe yes. They A lot of the documentation softwares that we're looking into do have SEO, which is going to be extremely powerful for us. Um, so they may appear, but I think they're, it would be behind a login. Mm. Um, so at least from my knowledge, it may be there, but I am not 100% sure. Okay, <laughs> no worries. I know it's too early to learn everything, um, but I'm sure you'll be there in a few moments' time. Yeah. So, Lindsay, with that, uh, we've come to the conclusion of our general questions. Is there anything I, I forgot to ask you or you would like to share with our audience before we move to the rapid fire round? I don't think so. Okay. So if that's the case, let me ask you the three questions under rapid fire round. And then maybe if you remember anything, we can do it at the end. Okay. Sounds good. Who have you learned the most about documentation from in your career? I would say my previous boss. Great. Can you share a documentation related resource you have consumed recently? This isn't directly documentation related, but I would say The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, uh, just because it provides a really great perspective on challenging obstacles, uh, especially in this, in this realm. Great. Can you mention the resource name one more time, Lindsay? Yes, it's The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Oh, okay. Obstacle is the Way. Great. My last question is, what is that one piece of documentation related advice you would give to your 20 year old self? I would say spend more time learning screenshot editing tools. <laughs> that is an area I've had to really expand and grow upon in my career. So learning that would be super powerful <laughs> to my so 20 year old self. Yeah. Wow. That's nice. <laughs> Something new, <laughs> which I have not heard so far. Oh, good. Super. So, Lindsay, I think we've come to the end of our podcast series. And uh, yeah, just as I said, is there anything else you would like to add to our audiences today? Nothing that comes to mind, but feel free to reach out if you would like me to elaborate on anything else. Super. So, Lindsay, good luck with your uh, new role and all the uh, adventures you're going to have with Paradox. And wish you all the best and have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. Please head to iTunes, rate, and provide honest feedback on the podcast. See you next week.